2023 ANZ Netball is officially back, and so are we. And welcome to the ANZ Premiership 2023. Join us on the couch as we debrief round one, introduce exclusive show segments. Kia Koto, welcome to Cruise Control. It's E News, new segment. Reflect back on this player's special trip home and kick off the season's grooviest comp. All that and more, it's time to get in the zone. Kia ora mai tato and welcome into your Monday night netball zone. Ko koni ho alongside me this evening. Cruz Tangira, Storm Purvis, great to be here. And what a match that was. I mean, the tactics, they were very dominant. They were dominant, but what, what I love to hear is Mila Rioli Buchanan saying that she's proud of her team and rightly so. They've lost Anna Harrison, they've lost Kayla Johnson, but they really stood up to the tactics. And of course for the tactics, a, a solid performance right throughout the court defensively. They picked up, picked up sorry, some really, really crucial ball, but Storm, for your start team what I what I mean what, what could they do better wearing purple what do you to get mean? out of the line it's, this evening it's lilac <laughs> the time purple. um look it was interesting to see all 11 players out there and so heavily rotated mm -hmm. from that defensive end especially I think it's round one it's game one as Mila said herself we can't or she can't and the team can't read too much into how that performance went other than just kind of getting a feel, you know, blow the cobwebs as she said. And I think going forward I'd like to see Kitty Wills coach just settle that line up a little bit. I don't know who that is yet. You know, we saw Amorangi Malisala and Jamie Hume both in goal attack and then the defensive end obviously. So many to choose from there. But I just spent that whole time talking about the stars. The tactics were great. <laughs> they were great, but I want to go back to Jamie Hume. She's coming back from a shoulder injury. So how was she? Great to see her out on court. Yeah, well, she played one quarter in their last preseason match on Wednesday night against the Mystics, and that's the first proper netball game player she's had in a very long time since her shoulder surgery. So great to see her get out on court. And, you know, same thing. It's going to take her a while to get that confidence back and, you know, just get the movement back with the whole unit. Um, but I, Amorangi was amazing. So, you know, two great goal attack options there. What about for you, Coco? You're a mid-quarter. Laura Malcolm, she's new to the tactics. How did you find her performance tonight? Yeah, I thought she was strong and she was very dominant, but I think she's still finding her way. And it is difficult when you've played overseas and coming into a New Zealand system and a New Zealand style of play. But I am looking forward to seeing the combination between her and Kimi Odapoi grow over this season. Alia Dunn, she's gone to the tactics. Your thoughts on her performance? Yeah, interesting to be nice, I guess. And not that she had a bad performance, but I thought that she was just trying to find that finesse in that game. I don't think that connection between herself and Tapia Sabi Rickett was quite strong. But yeah, good, 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 good first game. Funny to hear um, Jenny Woods, I think, say, you know, oh, Anna Harrison, sorry, they kept her to 89% <laughs> as if that was like not very good. But yeah, she obviously still had a great game. Great game. But another player who had a great game was Carden Berger. She is the player of the match. Well, Carden, congratulations. How did it feel out there? Round one. And you obviously are coming back from an injury. So haven't been out on the ANZ court for a while. Yeah, it feels a bit weird to be honest. Um, it does also feel like we've been in preseason for ages um, and it's come around real quick at the same time. So just good to be able, able to get out there and put out a good performance. I mean, you guys raving reviews between that combination between yourself and Jane Watson, but how did you find it in tonight's game? Yeah, I think in the preseason we've been struggling to get that connection back and finally tonight it's clicked. But it's also good to know that we've got a lot of other defenders and that we can change it up in our whole defensive unit. So it's exciting to see what we can do this season. Karen, you had to kind of change your game up between having Jamie Hume out at goal, goal attack or Amarangi Malisala. How did you actually change your game down? Can you break it, uh, break it down for us? Yeah, I know with Jamie coming in, she's quite dominant, so it's about grinding it out on her a little bit and doing my job on her before going in to help Jano. So it's a little bit more of doing my own job compared to when Amarangi's in, we get to work a little bit more as a unit, me and Jane. And Carter and Laura Malcolm, she's a new addition to your side. She comes probably more from the defensive end, from a wing defence position, but how did you find working with her? Yeah, it's amazing for her slotting straight in. She's so eager to learn and just add her little bit of input. And that also allows Kimmy to be that pocket rocker for us at wing attack. So, <laughs> again, versatility for us out there. So just with them two as a combo out there adds a lot of speed in our midcourt. Well, Cardin, congratulations. And we'll see you back in round two. Thank you very much. 
Well, great to hear from the players live and fresh off the court. Storm, round one, it started with the Mystics and they absolutely dominated the steal. You, you were on that match. Your thoughts, please. Uh, my thoughts on the Mystics, my thoughts on the match. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed that that was the first game of the season because I was so excited for Neville to be back. It was great to see the Mystics be so dominant and, and play so well, but at the same time, I was you know, gutted for the steal. Obviously, a bit depleted at the moment, losing George Fisher, no Tehungere or Selby Rickett, no Saviour Tui, and the match just got away from them. And I just felt, you know, the likes of Kate Burley trying so hard to get the ball. She got some great tips, but just felt like nothing was really going well for them. Um, so, yeah, great to see the Mystics start kind of where they left off pre Grayson Wickey's injury at the end of last season. And for me, after watching all sort of six teams out there, they've, they're the team for me that I think has the target on their back. Yeah, and you did say on Crowd Goes Wild tonight, they are very stacked, which they are. Well, that was the first game of round one. It was the Mystics and the Steel up here in Tamaki Makoto. Game one, and it was all the way of the Mystics cruise. Yes, it was. And like Storm just mentioned, a lot of really good performance, uh, personal performances from the Mystics. For the Steel, it was really hard for Coach Ranga Bloxham to find those changes that could really build that connection and get that intensity lifted. Um, as Storm also said, Kate. Kate Burley did a really good uh, job of not just staying on Grace Wickey but coming outside of the circle to hunt the ball. Michaela sokolic beaton is coming back from injury as well, her second season after that um, Achilles injury, so really good performance from her. A bit also Phoenix Kataka, she was the MVP in that game, picked up some stellar ball. Probably has one hand on that goal defence bib or that goalkeeper bib heading into the World Cup as well, Coco. And game two was in Palmerston North, the defending champions, the Pulse, up against the Magic, who didn't have a great season last year, but they've recruited well. And I tell you what, it was a game of two halves. The Pulse absolutely dominated the first half. Amelia Wormsley was the player of the match. She was strong under the post for them. But I'm not sure what was said in the sheds at halftime, but I tell you what, the Magic came out firing, and it was only one point in it. They were down by eight at one point and got to with within one point of the defending champion. <laughs> Yvette McCall's on jury, that was her straight to me. She was saying, what is happening <laughs> there? Yeah, well, the Magic nearly um, had a chance to send it into overtime. Would have been our first overtime of the season in round one. Imagine we that. would have been prepared for it, no doubt. Well, Kardenberger, we just spoke to her earlier. If we have a look at her match stats, and it's no shocker that she was the player of the match. She got a lot of turnover ball, didn't she, Cruz? Yeah, she did. I mean, look at those intercepts and deflections. Really, really good defensive effort from her tonight. As we spoke about, the combination with Jane Watson was terrific, but also the defensive um, midcourt is what they were doing outside of, outside of the circle storm, putting up that three-foot guard to create that lifted ball to get those intercepts. Yeah, absolutely. We're used to seeing current, I mean, sorry, Camille Poy in its centre, who's a great defensive centre, but um, if you isolate the unit completely, just how great was it to see Watson and Berger, great uh, back in form, where they left off, it's like they missed playing with each other. They look like they were having so much fun and yeah it's great to see in a world cup here i agree and speaking of the world cup cut burger she got to go home with the silver ferns for the quad series and here's a snippet of it going home in quad series in january was a big moment to be able to play in front of my family and show them what i do in real time since being in New Zealand for about, what, well, this is my 12th year now, um, I hadn't played in front of my family since like school days. I think mum came to World Cup, but that's about it. Um, I guess they always get to see what happens on court and on TV and, you know, over phone calls and stuff, but seeing it in real life is quite different. I haven't played in South Africa since playing in the black dress either, so that was a new experience and being part of a team and part of a team coming from the outside as a tourist was quite a different dynamic to what I'm used to is just going home and seeing the family. It was a good opportunity for us to be able to have that um, quad series in South Africa and have the lead in quite well into World Cup and knowing what that was going to look like as well. World Cup in itself is a massive opportunity to be able to play out there and represent your country um, and the fact that for me it can be in front of my family um, and the country that I grew up in as well. I try to not get the emotional side involved too much because I have a job to do and so when I am doing the job on court that I'm focused on what I need to do and being able to spend that time with family off court is, is quite precious. Yeah, I think the World Cup is, or any pinnacle event really, is always in the back of everybody's mind because every performance you put out there and everything you do, all the 1% of stuff off court as well, everything you do, um, you know, selectors are looking at you. 
but obviously the top priority for us is in the moment that we are and our franchise teams as well. So it's sort of having that dual responsibility of doing our job where we need to be, but also keeping in the back of our mind the little things that we need to keep ticking over to put our hand up for selections. Yeah, it's always good having someone back, like especially someone like Jane with all that experience and the voice on court as well. Um, and having that connection with your defensive unit really and having that constant chat behind me, I quite enjoy that. And we built a really good connection a couple of years ago, so being able to just rebuild on that, this will be a good setup for that leading into World Cup selections as well. And speaking of the World Cup and Silver Ferns, we welcome in Maya Wilson, Gina Crampton, fresh off the court. Thank you for joining us. Well, round one is out of the way. A loss, but you had moments where you almost took it to the tactics. We were just talking about this before, Coco. Bugger is our word right now. I feel like there were definitely moments within that full 60 minutes that we really came to the party. Maybe came to the party way too late, but looking forward to playing Magic next week in Tauranga. <laughs> Gee, I just want to go back to when you had your sabbatical. That must have been really nice, first of all. But second of all, what's the netball scene like up in America? Is there much of a following um, in, the, in, in netball up there? Unfortunately, there's not. I think there's a little club league um, over in Los Angeles, but that's the whole other side to New York where I was based. So, um, yeah, maybe we should try and bring it to America, I reckon. <laughs> Oh my gosh, 100%, a New York Netball League, how good would that be? Uh, Mice, if I just take you back to the quad series, I know that probably feels like a really long time ago now, it does for me anyway. Um, what do you remember from the series, what kind of memories stand out? Because obviously you were feeling out a new stadium, feeling out where the World Cup was going to be this year. I heard about some possible illness issues amongst the squad, what are your memories from that series? I think one one of the big key points that I felt like we came out of it is is there's a lot good going on in our camp. Um, it's and just unfortunately in that final game we weren't able to consistently be there. But excited to be back in South Africa. We hadn't been there in a few years and to test out the World Cup facility. So now we know what it's going to be like come January. But yeah, COVID sucks and <laughs> unfortunately I came back with South Af from South Africa with COVID. So it's just trying to find that feet again in a World Cup year is quite pinnacle. And Gina, the Silver Ferns had a camp recently, so how was that? And what have Knowles and Debs told, I guess, the squad about what they're looking for this year? Yeah, we had a, um, a two training day camp uh, a couple of weeks ago, which was really important to keep the squad together. Uh, we talked a lot about training back to back. That's something that let us down in quad series. So that was what the training was all about. Um, and obviously ANZ is where people are putting their hands up for World Cup selection. So we know that if we want to get picked in that team, we've got to show we can do it um, in ANZ. Uh, I think that's very clear. Um, and it's, yeah, I think it's very straightforward knowing what Knowles and Debs want from us. Um, yeah, so it's exciting. Well, thank you both, and we'll see you in round two. Thank you. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> well, and Storm, I want to talk to you about uh, the Netball World Cup and how much pressure is on these players. I think it's going to make the competition great this year because at the back of their mind, they know they're also trying to impress uh, Dame Knowles at home and push for that black dress. It's funny, people are talking about this quite a bit, right, the fact that there's no trials this year. Mm. But I feel like back when I was playing, and I'm sure you're the same, Courtney, ANZ or whatever league you were playing always felt like a trial anyway. You know, like you take so much as selectors and as coaches watching, I assume, anyway. You take so much from what you see out in an ANZ season because you play with combinations, you get to see them week in and week out. So pressure, yes, because it is a World Cup year and they want to play well, but I don't know if the fact that there isn't trials is really adding that layer of pressure, as, as people seem to be talking about. I think the girls are just going to want to play and stand out regardless. Yeah, I agree with you, Storm. All right, well, this year we have a TikTok competition for all you netballers at home. That is pressure. <laughs> we won't be doing it here on Netball Zone, but you grab your teammates all ages and stages and see if you can do it better than the ANZ girls. Each week we'll pick our favourite entry, which will be played out on the show and officially in the draw to win the grand prize pack, all thanks to Puma. We've got some real dancers in there, but here is a Puma prize pack, over $2,000 worth of gear to completely kit out your team. Make sure to follow them over on Instagram at Puma New Zealand. Jump over to Sky Sports TikTok, learn the dance, grab the sound, and remember to hashtag NetballZone in your entry. 
Well, I can confirm there'll be no TikTok moves from here, from us here on the couch. But what I can confirm is a new segment here on Netball Zone this season. It is Cruise, Cruise Control, where we offer you tips and tricks to elevate your netball game. Take a look. There is a basic setup of a shooter setting a screen for their partner. First, you want to identify the available space specifically closer to the goal. Next, you want to hold your defender high and close to the outer line of the circle edge. Once the other shooter sees that space available, they will run off the screen. The ball is then fed into the open space. The shooter receives the ball, turns and shoots. And that is a shooter setting the screen for their part. Yeah. Yes, cruise really control really like. every week on Nipple Zone. Also, a big mahi to the men that helped us out film that. But Courtney, what's coming up now? Well, I called out where the W full late yesterday. Silver Ferns assistant coach trying to get some insight into the Silver Ferns and the World Cup coming up in July. Well, Kilda Debs, how important is the ANZ Premiership in the build-up to World Cup this year? Oh, it's a massive part of the plan going into World Cup. It's 145 days since World Cup starts, so we have to be really prepared. The players identified that ANZ was a key part to their individual development, so that's what we want to see week in and week out. And what will you and Knowles be looking for throughout the Premiership? Um, just growth in people's skill sets and their physical capacity, the ability to be able to handle big moments in games and also the on-court leadership is crucial because when you get to World Cup you want people to be able to lead themselves. And can you give us some insight into what you've asked of the players in the squad? The facts are we're six points shy of Australia who are the number one ranked team so six points is three turnovers so what are the little things that each individual can um, reshape into their game but also we looked at what is world class, what is a world class um, team, what is a world class individual for each position so players are really clear on what those benchmarks are. How important was the quad series and in learning all this information? Oh really important look you have to sometimes crash the car so you can figure out what part of the car you need to fix before you go into the big Formula One event in, in July so it's really important that um, we pulled apart the team pulled, put people under real pressure so we we kind of have an idea now about um, the spine of the team we have an idea about um, what people's capacity is under pressure. In your opinion, how is the car looking overall? The car's looking fantastic. <laughs> Got a warrant of fitness? No. I, I think it's it's really strong. We're really lucky and fortunate to have a great balance in our squad of seasoned campaigners um, and also the injection of um, you know, young players coming through who are hungry, man. They're hungry to get on the world stage and make a name for themselves. When you look at the World Cup, obviously Australia up there, but what else do you need to focus on and think about? And you guys do get six weeks after ANZ Premiership finishes to have time with the team. Yeah, I think it's just really building um, the team to be aligned on, well, this is how we want to play, this is our game style, this, and be show real belief in what we want to achieve. Um, I think that's the key thing in the six weeks. But now is the hour. You know, you can't just turn up six weeks before you go into a world event and expect things to come together. So the real asset and the real grind behind improving your game happens every week. We want every game to go to the wire in ANZ so that we can really test people's thinking, gamesmanship and their leadership. Well, thanks, Deb. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, they're watching every game, so are we. So who have been your round one standout? For me, definitely Grace Weekend at Goal Shoot for the Mystics. <gasps> can I pick two? <laughs> yes, you can. I'm going to be really boring and pick our two MVPs, but Phoenix Karaka and Karen Berger. Take the goldies. Put them on the plane. You can't <laughs> tell that she's a defender, can you? And sticking <laughs> with defenders, we've got a new segment on Netball Zone this year called E! News. Welcome everybody, it's E! News, new segment where I... E! News? E! News! E! News! It's actually where I catch up with players and ask all the important questions. Hey. Kia ora! Kia ora! Hello, just, just for an intro, because it's the first one, are you ready? I think hey, I'm ready! Hey Whitney! Hey what? Introduce yourself! No way! Introduce yourself! Okay! Your uh, name is... Whitney! Yeah! I like to party! Yeah! And when I shake it... Woo! Oh, boys go, oh, mommy! <laughs> Nice. Well, hey, I miss you. I miss you for that reason. Thank you. I know. I miss you too. Okay, so... A little bit. A little bit, eh? Yeah. You missed that banter because we were on court. Yeah. Right? So... I didn't miss that. So... Yeah. Can you, for everyone back at home, tell them what's happening on court when you and I are out there? 
You're doing a lot of talk um, from the back, so I can hear you, um, you know. Is that good? Yeah, uh, like for... sometimes I want you to encourage me, okay. but you are saying some random things. Okay, okay. Trying to put me off, but that's okay. I'll work on that for next yeah, time yeah, we yeah. meet each other. Yeah. Now, I don't know if some people know this back home, you're a DJ. Right, so you're a DJ. DJ. Have you, one, got the moves alongside your music, and two, what's been going on with the DJ realm? Well, I put the DJ um, business on the side. For now, just to focus on netball. Um, it's hard to do gigs and stuff whilst we're in season, so kind of just, yeah, taking a break, but I still like making mixes and just, you know, keep practicing and that. But other than that, I'm just trying to focus on netball this year and see how I go. Are you dedicated to DJ for your team? Like, do you have to do things yeah. for them and, and for ferns? Because... Um, yeah, I do and I don't. Like, they'll ask me to make mixes, like, maybe for entry, like, you know, when we come in court and stuff. But other than that, I just charge the music, you know? Would you, because you used to play for Magic, would you make us a mix? It would cost you. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give you one ball on court. Three balls. <laughs> She's, she's out here scamming me. Yeah. Nah, it's right, I'll keep my own music. Thank you, Whitney. I've got two segments to finish with that you, I've already brief, briefed you on, so one's up on game. Can you give someone out there a tip that will bring them up on game? It might be listen to music, it might be a podcast that you're listening to, something that's going to put a player who's playing now up in their game. You know what? I think music is a big part of my game day. I like to listen to it in the morning when I wake up, um, you know, getting ready, pre-game, when I'm at the court. I think music just helps you get in the zone. Anything? doesn't matter what kind of music. Oh, yeah. um, Sometimes it's slow R&B, but other times, more recently it's been like kind of house, you know, boom, boom music, so. And actually, I want to know if there was an ultimate player to be made, so you can take a piece of any player. Uh, or like, so if I made an ultimate player, it might have Laura Langman's, like, speed or footwork. It might have Casey Corpus' ability to read the court. If you take one thing from any player and put it into an ultimate player and make that player at the end of the year, what would you take from what player? I think you're looking at it right here. Me and you. No! <laughs> your height, your banter, my speed, my... What do you call it? I don't know. You're everything, man. You're No, you're I don't know. But ah. yeah, put us two together and that will be a cool combo to watch, I think. Okay, cool. Hey. <laughs> we'll put that out, us two, into the ultimate yeah, play yeah, and we'll yeah. see what we get. Shop yeah. it. Shop. All right, so. back to Coco and Cruz in the studio. Nibble zone. Nice. Oh, I love it. And Storm, that is E! News. Looking forward to it every week along with Cruise Control. This has been round one of the ANZ Premiership. It all got underway in Auckland. It was the Mystics over the Steel uh, with a dominating win. The defending champions got that win over the Magic. Only one point in it, and tonight it was the tactics too good for the Stars. Yes, and if we look at the ladder after round one, of course, the Mystics sitting on top with that big goal difference over the Steel. And first equal with the Tactics and also the Pulse. Magic on one, only losing by one in that game against the Pulse down in Palmerston North. And if we have a look at round two this weekend, it's a double header on Saturday. The Magic at home to the Stars. Then the Pulse in Wellington against the Steel. Tactics get to go home to Christchurch. And that'll be a great one against the Mystics, two winning teams. They're still going to have to back it up and travel all the way back to Auckland to take on the Stars. So that's round two, but Storm, that's not all the netty that we have this week inside Netball. Inside Netball is back on Thursday night, guys. We have Dame Nolan Todor as our special guest on the show. So we will try and get just as much info as you got out of Debbie Fuller. <laughs> um, it'll be good. I've got Jenny Woods and Adine Wilson joining me. And Cruz, what are you looking forward to in round two? Definitely the matchups all over the court. For me, it's the young players that are coming through. Amelia, and, uh, Amelia Wormsley, sorry, I was outstanding for the pulse. I'm looking for another good game from her. Well, it's all happening this season on Sky Sport with the ANZ Premiership. Thank you so much for joining us on Netball Zone. For your Monday night, Nettie will be here every week. Storm, we're going to try and make her come back every week. But with it's been a myself, long day. I'm Courtney, Cruz, Tangida, <laughs> thanks for joining us. And we'll see you for round two of the ANZ Premiership live on Sky Sport. Thank you.